Okay, before I continue on with this next video, just got to mention it's a hot day, so I'm sat in the conservatory, so if you hear any dogs barking or anything, there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, as I said in the first video, what we're going to do is uh, just take a quick look through getting Radiant set up in this view. I personally find this one the best, where we've got the camera up here top left, and then we've got our YX, ZX, and ZY windows, uh, which are our three planes within the 3D world. You may find that it may be easier for you to look at it in different ways, but for the case of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to go about setting it up in this way anyway. Okay, so what we need to do first is go over to Edit, and then click Preferences down at the bottom. And this will bring up the Net Radiant Preferences window. You see I'm using Net Radiant rather than GTK Radiant. I'll put a link over in the description on the right hand side to tell you where to get Net Radiant. It's basically the same as GTK Radiant, only this one's actually being uh, developed, whereas GTK Radiant uh, has basically been uh, abandoned. Okay, so let's have a look through what we've got. Global Preferences, if you want to enable logging, you can turn that on there. Uh, it, it's not really something I have enabled, although I'm guessing I probably should. Uh, right, game. We select the game. We use an Alien Arena 2009, and you see we've got Quake 2, Nexus, Dark Places, and Warso there as well. Um, at startup, you can show the global preferences. This will bring up a little box uh, which allows you to select the game. If we're just working with Alien Arena 2009, there's no reason to have this ticked, although I'll always leave it ticked anyway, just in case I'm going to develop for anything else. It doesn't hurt to have this enabled, you know, if, if you decide you want to start mapping for other games as well, or test your skills over there, then it's best to just leave that on, just as a, a quick way to flick between games. Okay, now we come down to Interface. Uh, we've got Multi-Monitor. If you don't have Multi-Monitor, you don't need to worry about it. And this Default Text Editor is just checked anyway, so you're okay with that. Now, Layout. This is the panel where we set how the 3D planes and camera view are going to be uh, displayed in our window. Uh, see we've got a couple of different types of layout here. I always use the third, win uh, third window along because we've got the camera X, Y, Y, Z and X, Z uh, which is this setting uh, we've got here. It's the four windows. Also you can choose detachable menus, patch toolbar and plug-in toolbar. It basically means that the menus can be detached and floated round and you get uh, separate toolbars as you can see behind uh, for different layouts. Okay, we come over to our mouse tab and you can see you can select what type of mouse you've got and uh, whether your right button will do anything or activate the context menu etc. Uh, the context menu I'll show you very shortly, we'll get into that in the next window. So just set it up for the amount of buttons you have on the mouse and uh, also what the right button will do. Under our display textures uh, selection you can choose what texture quality you'll want uh, to display in the editor itself, it's best to leave it as 100%. Back in the day when computers weren't as powerful and you were using um, a lot, lot slower processors and a lot less memory, it, this would help speed up the program by turning the texture quality down as it didn't need to render it all in high quality. It can still help now if your maps start to get very big, but you know you can set off as 100% for your starting point, and then if you find things becoming unresponsive or slow, you can always flip down through them. Okay, patches, don't need to really touch that. Entities, you can show the light radius or light radii. Uh, basically, this just provides a big red circle when you have a light entity selected in your map. It's not really very useful. It can help with debugging, but it doesn't really give you uh, any sort of real-time you know, lighting or any sort of indication of how the light will actually work. It does vary game to game, so this really isn't very useful, I find. Settings, we can load last map on open. You don't really want to do that all the time. Undo queue size. Now, turn this up as high as you can because you'll find in Radiant you'll make a mistake and then you'll make another mistake and you'll think, oh crap, I need to go back. And if you have it set down so low, you know, you might compile the map and find a load of errors and think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And then you'll try and undo a couple of times, and I think by default this is set to 64, so set it up as high as you can get it, or as high as you think you'll need it. Somewhere around the 500 mark <laughs> would be very useful, and for people like me, with a high mistake ratio, a thousand's brilliant. Okay, we've got various settings for the brushes here. Uh, we can snap planes to integer grids, and default texture scaling. And always use, use cork for new brushes. Well, we don't really always want to do that because we're going to get pink brushes uh, appearing in the map. 
so just leave these unchecked for now. I'll explain a little bit about cork uh, a little bit later. The grid, you can set a default grid space in here, which is, you know, you've got from right down to 0.125 units, right the way up to 256. And this will just change the grid displays in these windows, but you can change that using keys on the keyboard anyway, which we'll talk about shortly. Now paths, this is the path to your engine. So we've got engine path, Alien Arena 2007. Um, there's a reason it's set as 2007, which I explained in the first video. Um, so yeah, we don't need to touch that. Surface inspector, uh, don't need to really touch anything there. Now camera, camera is how the camera in the top left is gonna move. Now we've got a movement speed and we can link strafe speed to the movement speed so we can strafe left and right in the camera window uh, just to you know, uh, have the movement match to the 100%. We can have a rotation speed so we can choose how quick the camera will rotate and you can also set a discrete movement. Now by default this one enable far clip plane will be turned on and basically I'll show you that very quickly if I can. I'll just turn that on and we'll open up uh, a map. Now see the way a lot of the entities, that one there in the middle, that brush is flickering on and off and it looks like there's nothing else in our world. Well as we move forward you'll see things start appearing. Okay now it becomes it's useful if you've got a very big map but to be completely fair you know it it's gonna be something that you're not really I doubt gonna need because it, it becomes annoying when you look and think right does this does this item here does this line up with the one over there well I can't really tell because I can't see it so you know it just becomes a it's a hindrance more than a help with the newer machines and faster uh, processors so yeah you can turn that on and off I suggest leaving it off so go back to preferences and camera and you just uncheck enable far clip far clip plane okay orthographic we can leave everything really uh, here selected uh, just leave it as default now clipper the clipper tool uses cork this I always enable this cork I don't believe is really used in alien arena however it helps when you're clipping a brush which I'll explain later you can actually see the the plane on which you've cut this brush on and it will uh, light up with the cork texture which is pink so you can you know you remember to go back to that and texture it later if you need to now the build menu uh, we don't usually in Alien Arena use the built-in build menu in Radiant we actually go out and use a batch file or go onto the command line and type in the compile uh, options so I really wouldn't uh, go ahead and use these it's up to you some people may want to use them but for the sake of this tutorial we'll be doing it all command line and we'll show you there now the texture browser uh, will show you a texture scroll bar yep uh, texture thumbnail scale now obviously some of the textures in alien arena will be pretty big so what we don't want to go ahead and do is show the textures are a hundred percent size because we'd be scrolling through forever just to find that one texture that we want you can also change the mouse wheel increment so that when you scroll your mouse wheel it will uh, move down at, a, at that set rate and we can choose to load shaders at startup whether you want to load any in uh, you can set it to whatever you need to but when, uh, to be honest I always keep it as none and I've never found any problem and finally the biggie auto save always enable auto save and save snapshots that should actually be checked uh, but always keep everything here you know make sure you've got auto save enabled I don't know how many times I've been com making a map and Radiant has decided to crash and I wish I would have set the auto save interval a little bit lower like two minutes that's definitely being done now so that's it that's how you set up this uh, this view now obviously what one the one thing I didn't mention is in preferences if you set up the layout um, this will require Radiant to be restarted to take effect so just go ahead and uh, close Radiant out and when you start it up you should uh, see a window something like this nothing in any windows and it should all be set out nice right in the next tutorial we'll head on to building uh, simple brushes in Radiant thanks for watching